Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be learning how to do a pretty cool effect. It is an endlessly scrolling star field. So I'm going to show you what this is going to look like. All right, so we can hold in the arrow keys, and it will speed up the speed at which these uh, stars are scrolling. As you see, they are parallaxing, so those further in back are moving slower than those in front. We can move in any direction smoothly. And uh, whenever we let go of any of the keys, it'll slowly decay the velocity until they come to a stop. So this would be really good for like if you're making a uh, top-down space scrolling game or something like that. Like Starflight for the uh, Sega Genesis. Awesome game. If you guys haven't played Starflight, I recommend you uh, boot up an emulator and check it out right now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start a new project here. Um, let's go on into the frame. Now the first thing we want to do is click on the frame and since this is going to be a star field we're going to change the background color to black so go to the settings of the frame click on the background color and set that to black. We're going to go ahead and need to insert an active object this is going to be our star. So let's go ahead and name this star now. We need another object this is going to be the layer object. We're going to use this to dynamically control the Z hierarchy of the stars so that those who are supposed to be uh, the forefront closer are in front of the stars that are further back. All right, let's give this some values here, this star. We need an X pos and a Y pos value. And that is because we're going to be using sub pixel movement. Also going to need an X dir and a Y dir. We're going to use these to control which direction the star is moving. And lastly, we need a speed value, SPD, not SPEED, and that's because the word speed is reserved in Fusion. So we got to make it SPD instead. It's also shorter and easier to type. Okay, so this whole thing is actually based off of a formula that allows you to wrap objects around a screen. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. We're going to set up an always event, and we are always going to do something to the star, and that is this. We're going to set its X and Y coordinate to a formula. So set the X coordinate to, grab its current X coordinate. We want to add the frame width. Now that is because on the X um, axis, that is relative to the width. And on the Y axis, we're going to be using the frame height. So go ahead and put these in parentheses, this bit of formula here. Now we're going to use modulus next. So mod, and again, frame width. OK. Now let's do the uh, similar, pretty much the same formula, but for Y, so we're going to need to change a few things. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to set the Y position to the current Y position, plus frame height, because like I said, this is relative to height because it is on the Y. Put these in parentheses, mod frame height. Okay, to test to see if this worked, we're going to go ahead and click on the star object and we're going to change the movement type from static to eight directions, just so we can test this really quick and see if it's working. Boom. So we can wrap the object. So this is kind of the basis of the entire thing. So because this formula works, we're going to create a star field, give them different speeds that they're, they're going to move. And uh, we're actually going to change the, uh, the scale of them based around their speed that they're going to get randomly. And um, that's about it. We're going to make sure they wrap. And then we're going to move them using the directional keys. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and also give the star random art. So there's a bunch of different stars. And I'm going to do that this way. Double click on your star. Go to the uh, directions object sorry the directions options under stopped we want the speed of this animation to be zero because we do not want this to animate we're going to copy this four times so we have four different frames and in each frame draw a different star so just make it something simple i'm just going to make like shapes little bright shapes dots of different colors things like that all right, so now that we got our star, we need to make sure it is a static movement again. Also, make sure under the uh, properties of the star on runtimes options, we want to uncheck create at start. Also, uncheck destroy object if too far from frame and inactive if too far from frame. Just in case they get too far from the frame, we do not want them becoming uh, unactivated or destroyed. Okay, so now we need to create these at start. So make a start a frame event. And what we're going to do is start a loop. So fast loop, start loop. 
We're going to call this spawn stars. And we're going to run it however many times, uh, how many stars we want. So we're just going to do 250, but you can change this number if you want. Okay, now we're going to do something on that loop. And that is, the loop was called spawn stars. First thing we want to do is create the object, that is the star, and you can put this anywhere, doesn't matter. Next thing you want to do is randomly set the X and Y position. So go to position, set X coordinate, we're going to say random, parentheses, and uh, this is the frame width, because we want to have a random X position on the size of the frame. And we're going to do the same thing for Y, so set the position Y coordinate to random frame height. And then we want to set the value of speed something. We'll say random 100. We're going to add one to this because the random value generator, actually, uh, if, we, if we randomize 100, we would get zero to 99. We don't ever want to get zero. Okay, because that will actually make our objects invisible if they get a scale of zero. There's only a you know, one in 100 chance that that'll happen, 1% chance, but it might happen and we don't want our stars to be invisible so make sure you add a plus one at the end okay now we want to set the scale relative to the speed value so go to scale set scale grab the value of speed now since scale is based on one being full scale we don't want this number to be too big so we're going to multiply this by 0 0.02 and you can play around with this to get the size of stars that you prefer we want one for maximum quality Okay, now we need to plug in the uh, current x and y position into the value of x pos and y pos because we're going to use the values of x pos and y pos to move these objects instead of the in, um, inborn x and y positioning of the object. And that's because um, the x and y movement of an object doesn't have floats by default, so you can not really get subpixel movement. This is the way you do that. You need to use an x pos and y pos value. So set the alterable value of x pos to the current x position and set the value of y pos to the current y position and lastly we're going to want to get a random picture for our star and since we have those four different frames of animation we're just going to go ahead and set the uh, animation frame which is under animation change animation frame and we're going to change that to random four because there were four possible different stars. All right, let's run this and see what happens. Okay, we have a star field. One of my stars looks like a question mark, but you know, we're just going to roll with it since this is just a tutorial. Okay, so now we need to uh, actually update the position of the stars. And like we did earlier, we're going to also need to use that formula that keeps it wrapping on the screen. So, so we're going to always need to add something to the X pos and Y pos values. We're going to do that this way, alterable value, add to, we're going to add to X pos. And what that's going to be is under the star, we want to get the value of speed because this is going to control uh, how quickly this thing moves. So something, a, st a star which is smaller, which is going to have a smaller speed, is going to move much slower than a bigger star with a faster speed, which is going to appear to be closer to us. This is going to create a parallax effect. So we're going to do that by um, <clears throat> taking, adding the speed. We're going to multiply that by the value of x dir, because this is the x position we're changing. Put this whole thing in parentheses. And multiply this by 0.01. Okay, so we gotta do pretty much the same thing for the y pos value. So add to y pos, grab the value of speed, multiply the value of wider, because this is the y direction. Put a parentheses around these and multiply this by 0 0.01. So that's all we got to do there. That is updating the values of X pos and Y pos, but it isn't updating the position yet. We're not setting the position of the star to that yet. So here's the point where we're going to apply that formula to do the wrapping. We are going to set the value of X pos to grab the value of X pos, add the frame width because this is on the X coordinate. We're going to put this inside of parentheses and we're going to mod frame width. 
Okay, so now we gotta do pretty much the exact same thing for the Y pos value. So go to Ultra Values, and we're gonna set the Y pos value to the Y pos value. So plug that in. We're gonna add the frame height because this is on the Y axis, we're moving up and down. So we're concerned with the height on this. Put this in parentheses, mod frame height. Boom. Now all we have to do is actually update the positions. So we're gonna set the X coordinate to the value of X pos. Can't just type that in, that would be a global value if I did that. Retrieve X pos from the object and then set the position of the the Y coordinate of the object to the value of Y pos. So plug that in now, and there. So this is actually the majority of our code. Now all we need to do is uh, allow ourselves to use the arrow keys to change the values of X dir and Y dir, and then um, we're pretty much finished. So we're gonna do that now with a keyboard event. Repeat while key is pressed. We're gonna need a repeat while key is pressed for each direction, so I'm gonna copy this and edit it with Control V, Control C. So we're gonna have a right arrow, a left arrow, an up arrow, and a down arrow. Okay, so now that we have these inputs set, we need to modify the values of uh, X dir and Y dir. That's how we're going to control the movement of these stars. And we're gonna do that by adding to them. So while we hold in the right arrow, we wanna to add to X dir, and we wanna add a negative 0.2. And you can play around with these numbers all you want. Um, it's up to you, then tweak it to get the kind of feel and vibe you want for your particular effect. Now the reason we're adding a negative is because I don't want to uh, have to use the subtract command and adding a negative is the same as subtracting, so it's just faster. So I'm going to drag this down and edit this, and I'm going to just make this adding 0.2. So in this one we're actually adding 0.2 when we're holding left. When we hold right we are subtracting 0.2 or adding a negative 0.2. All right, so now repeat while up arrow is pressed, we are going to essentially gonna add to the value of Y dir. And that is going to be, um, since we're going holding up, that is normally negative, but we're gonna actually add 0 0.2 now. Drop this over here, edit it, and we're gonna subtract 0 0.2 when we're holding down. Um, okay, let's run it and see how it looks. Looks good. There is one problem with it right now though, and that is that there is no decay for this. So when we let go, it will keep scrolling forever and not slow down. We wanna create a decay, so when we let go, it just kinda slowly um, decelerates. So set up an always event, and this is really easy. We're just always going to set the value of xdir to itself times 0. Uh, we want this to be slow decay so 99 now this is how you set up a decay value because if you keep multiplying a value by 0. 0.99 each time it does that it's going to get a little bit smaller so we got to do the same thing for the wider so alter a value set wider to the value of wider times 0. 0.99 Lastly, I'm going to go here to my runtime options and I'm going to um, I'm going to set it so that it resizes to fill the display. I like doing that for my programs. Then I'm going to run it and see how it looks. Letting go. There is a decay. Looks pretty good. That first star though looks god awful. I need to fix that. It looks like a question mark. Much better. So there it is. This is an endlessly scrolling star field. It's really not that hard. It's just some simple math. Um, so yeah, you guys can play around this and try to get the effect you're looking for. Um, you know, change the speed around, change the size around. It's totally up to you. But I thought this was cool enough to show off, so here we go. Alright guys, as always, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like this, please comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed for more videos. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if you need help, feel free to look in the uh, description. And I have a link to my Discord channel. It's pretty populated, lots of people there who like to help out, so go there and 
get some assistance if you need it, or just hang out. So, uh, yep, as always, everyone, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.